1,300 miles to San Antonio, another couple hundred miles down here to South Padre Island. It was a long, long drive. That my cameraman did nothing but sleep, and I drove all through the night. Probably would have been easier just to fill the camas up with fuel and just cut across the lake and shot straight across. It's been a long drive. <laughs> I'm only 1,463 miles from home. 20 hours? No, it says 20 and a half hours, but it, that's 20 hours just to fill the thing up, stopping at a whopping 7.9 miles per gallon. <laughs> You've been sitting in the car way too long, doing nothing but sitting, because you sure ain't help with the driving. That's a fact. I made the journey to Texas to fish with a client and friend, Eric Sepulveda. Eric has a passion for snook fishing, and it was probably 10 years ago when he first booked me on my home waters at Stewart for a charter, specifically to catch trophy snook. All along he's telling me about the snook fishery in Texas and kept inviting me out. Well, I've finally taken him up on his offer and made the long trip out to Port Isabel, Texas. So we are, like I said, southern Texas, 20 miles from the border. Port of Brownsville is where we're gonna be fishing, deep water channel, and surrounded by so much shallow water that obviously these fish don't have a lot of places to go in the wintertime. It was 30 something degrees two days ago, mm -hmm. where we just were in Texas. It's supposed to get cold again later in the week. I mean, these temperature swings here are crazy. And that's normal for this area? Uh, not really, but when they do, when it does do that, I mean, all these fish just head to the port and uh, they're pretty predictable in there, so we can, I mean. 63 degree water temperature, so we're gonna head it here in the back end of the port, deep water, see how long it is. You know, surrounded by this vast amount of shallow water, they don't have any place to go, but the deep water to stay healthy in the winter time, so this is where we're gonna go, way back in there. See what the weather's doing. I think I think we got some, some weather coming in. Check out Sirius out here. Front just came through here, and this is the big one that's coming on Thursday. This one's supposed to bring a lot of freezing rain to Texas, some snow. So today and tomorrow, hopefully they feel that front coming through and they chew. This is pretty crazy. Heavily industrialized, a lot of these ships come in here and they dismantle them, recycle them. You gotta go where the fish are. This is the only deep water around. This is where they're gonna be. This is the deepest water in South Texas, this channel right here. Yeah, you know, 40, 50 feet deep. God, oh my God, oh yeah. You didn't see him? 
I didn't see him. <laughs> Oh, there he is. That's him. Easy, easy, easy boy. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that wasn't happening. Dude, how do you get him out of here? Seriously, use this light tackle? Come on, dude, just pull him out. Just pull him out. Just All like right. You, just like you tell me over there. Just pull, pull him, him out. out. Let's send a bait down. You wanna be lazy? I'll give him lazy. I know lazy snook. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go like a, a knocker rig, but I like to keep the weight down by the hook so it doesn't ride up. So I'm actually gonna put the weight right in my loop. So the, it's gonna have to almost act like a jig head and drive the bait down to the bottom. My drag is going to be my feet across the deck. Yeah, I saw him out here. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, good fish. Uh oh, there's one, Eric. I saw him down there. I threw that bait in there. He rose up on it. You see him eat it? Yeah. <laughs> That's like combat fishing. Finally got one to eat. Look at that. So I came to Texas, drove all that way. Sweet! <laughs> the hook falls out. Nice, man. Nice little fish. I saw him laying down there and I threw that mullet in there and I just felt, I, I watched him swim away and I felt the thump. That's about the common size? Yeah, here, yeah. Pretty skinny. That's what I was telling you, remember? They're not like the ones over there. Hey, it's still a snook. Cool. Nice, that's the first one. That's why I came. That's a snook. That's a snook. Right in that structure. Oh, Jack. Thought it was a snook, but it's a jack. Thumped it right when I threw it in there. Got some good jacks here, Eric. This one followed me from Stewart, I think. You get some bruiser jacks here, huh? Lots of them. Oh, I threw it in there. He thumped it right away. I mean, just solid. Boom. Thought for sure it was a snook. Swallowed it. I don't know if it's gonna rain, if it's gonna snow, fog, sun. I've never seen a change in weather like this in my life. I think it is gonna snow in Texas though, somewhere. Tomorrow. Tomorrow.
forecasts have been all over the place. There he is! Get him out of there! Get him out of there! Sheepy! Jailbird! <laughs> it's a go! Nice! Nice! A little variety in here, man. Yeah, there's everything. Everything's in here. Do you guys get a lot of these? Yeah. It's the first time I catch one like that, but. <laughs> when you're yeah. slick vision. Well, all this structure, man. They all love the same stuff. Yeah. Jacks, snapper, sheepy heads. You eat these back there? I do not. I know they're really good eating them. A lot of people eat these here. Good job. It is, right? I threw it all the way back in that corner and he ate it right away. Rolling motor, George. Yeah, we're good. We're good. good. God, as soon as that thing hit the water, he ate it. Little guy. Sirius XM Marine provides real-time weather information relative to my boat's position directly on my multifunction display. What this means is regardless of where I am, inside or outside of cellular coverage, I know exactly what's happening around me as far as weather conditions. This is an invaluable feature, especially for smaller boats that can be more at the mercy of the elements. Whether I'm inshore or far offshore, I can track storms and know their movement and intensity and make the most informed decisions to ensure a safe day on the water. Fish mapping is another great feature of Sirius XM. Fish mapping identifies specific locations in the oceans with the highest likelihood of finding fish that you're targeting. Regularly updated science-based data helps you locate fish faster and saves you time and money. In addition to the fishing recommendations, features also include weed lines, sea surface height anomalies, sea surface temperatures, plankton concentrations, and more. Make sure you check out SiriusXM.com and subscribe today. There he is. There he is. There's a fish. That looks like a snook. Yep. Yep. That's one. There he is. Uh, nice little snook. <laughs> Pretty industrial back here. But that's where they're at. Texas snook. Got him on the go. He's bouncing the bottom, tide's falling out of there. I mean, it looks like a little spillway in here. All that water's rushing out of there. So cool. Little guy, little male probably. Just got him on that gulp, bouncing that jig head on the bottom. Look at that, it's just perfect. All that water pouring out of there. Right where they gotta be.
a bit. Ooh, nice snapper. Look at that oh, thing. Nice. That thing's full grown. It's a healthy one right there. That is a stud. I don't want him to ruin my hand though. We got a lot of sharp points on him. He got a lot of sharp points. Let's get the hook out. Oh, look at that. Came here for snook. There's a lot of bycatch. Jacks, snapper, tons of ladyfish. This snook as well. Texas has got it all. Finally, the fog has burned. It's almost three o'clock. It took that long for it to clear up. So hopefully, with this bright sun, it can warm the water up a little bit, make them a little bit more active. I hope so. <laughs> we hope so. It's kind of a grind. Water's kind of cold. We know snook don't like cold water. So hopefully, afternoon bite. Fish. A little snook or a little trout. A little That's snook. A little, a little snook. Yeah. There we go. A little snook. A little Texas snook. I got bit right in there. The first cast, uh, Eric. What's that? I got bit on the first cast in there. There might be more. There we go. Been struggling all day with these colder water temperatures. You know, just struggling to find them. Hitting so many different spots in this deep water. They're not very cold tolerant. Water's in the 60s, and this is the only deep water in southern Texas, so this is where they're gonna be. This is a species that I've chased my whole life, and until and the last couple of years, I didn't even realize they were in Texas. So, really cool to be able to come here, and regardless of the size. Eric asked if we wanted to join him out at a buddy's ranch for a barbecue, and we definitely wanted to take him up on that offer. Now they start firing Texas, boys. A trip like this is never about catching a fish. It's more about the journey of getting to the destination. Sure, the time on the water is great, 
and I was happy to catch the targeted species we came for. But hanging out with the guys around the barbecue, sharing good food and some beer, these are the moments that I remember and have grown to appreciate the most. How many backlashes do you think you had this trip? Listen, if this thing falls out of the truck on the way home, I will not be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, see that cast? Some practice in that one. We're 1,950 miles in three days. This thing got a blood clot that went to my brain from sitting for so long.